Welcome ladies and gentlemen to Unit 2 Pre-Calculus Review. We're going to be talking about page 1 in this video. If you are on any of the other pages of the review packet, please click the link in the top right hand corner to designate the specific page that you need to go to. Okay, so we're going to get started. Uh, remember, if you are able to do all these types of problems or understanding concepts to go along with it, you should be able to do fine for the uh, test. Okay, so let's get started. Number 1. What we're going to start off first is we're going to plot this point 3 comma 4, 3 over, 4 up. And what we're going to do here is we're going to get a triangle. And I'm going to just finish up the triangle. It's a 3, 4, 5, also known as a Pythagorean, Pythagorean triple. So the theta is always going to be in that portion of the triangle. And then we're going to set up for sine of theta, cosine of theta, and tangent of theta. So I look at the triangle and I use that as a guideline to figure out what is sine, cosine, and tangent. So sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over hypotenuse, or excuse me, opposite over adjacent. Remember that whole Soka Toa thing. Now, we can also write it as um, the y value over r, the x value over r, and the y over the x. Okay. Um, Cosine, the reciprocal function for that is cosecant. So all you're doing here is you're just taking that fraction, 5 over 4, and we are just going to, or 4 over 5, and flip it. Secant, what we're going to do is we're going to write that as 5 over 3. And then tangent, right, the reciprocal function for that one is going to be cotangent. So we're going to write that as 3 over 4. And that's it. Um, we don't need to worry about any negatives because it is in the first quadrant. But let's move on to the next one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with um, negative 5, negative 12. So 5, 12. So the triangle here is going to be in the third quadrant. And I know that's a 13 because, yet again, another Pythagorean triple. So let's start off with inverse, or excuse me, sine of theta, which is going to give me 12 over 13. Cosine of theta, which is going to give me 5 over 13, and tangent of theta, which is going to give me 12 over uh, 5. Now, since um, this is in the third quadrant, we need to remember all students take calculus. Remember, that's to help you figure out whether one is going to be positive or negative. So in that quadrant, tangent is the only one that's going to be positive, so we're going to make sine and cosine negative. Now to finish this up, uh, cosecant of theta, which is going to be the flip version, 13 over 12, make sure that's negative, secant of theta, which is going to be equal to 13 over 5, make sure that that's also negative, and cotangent here, cotangent of theta, which is going to be equal to 5 over 12. And that's it. Now the last one. I'm going to just scroll over just for a little bit so that I have room for myself. So if I'm drawing this triangle, 10, 13, so 10, 13. Now I don't know what that value is, so I'm going to do some Pythagorean theorem to be able to figure out that value. So I'm going to do 10 squared plus 13 squared, which is going to give me r squared. That's 100 plus 169 is equal to r squared. So I get 269 is equal to r squared square root both sides, and I get r is equal to square root of 269. So if I start off first, sine of theta, this is the opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be 13 over square root of 269. But we need to make sure that we rationalize it because we don't want a radical in the bottom. So I'm going to write that as 13 square root of 269 over 269. Um, we're going to work with cosine next. And I'm going to just, um, just jump straight to the answer with this one. 10 square root of 269 over 269. And then tangent of theta, which is going to be equal to 13 over 10. Now remember, we still need to go back and we need to determine whether it's going to be positive or negative for those values. So it's going to be only positive for cosine. So let's make this negative. Let's make that negative. Let's go to cosecant of theta. Since if you flip this, you don't actually have to rationalize because the radical is going to be up top while the 13 is going to be on the bottom. Remember, it's still negative. Secant 
of theta, which is going to be equal to, same deal, uh, square root of 269 all over 10, but remember it's positive, and then cotangent of theta, which is going to be equal to 10 over 13. Make sure you make that negative, just like that. Alright, number one is finished. Let's move on to number two. Now, to figure out whether something is positive coterminal, negative coterminal, and a reference angle, what you're going to do is you're going to take a look at each angle, and each angle is either going to be in degrees or radians. Now, if they're in degrees, the positive and negative coterminals also have to stay positive. If it is a radian, then they have to stay in radians, except for the reference angle. The reference angle could either be in degrees or radians. It does not matter to me. So let's get started. Positive coterminal. What I do is I do 235 plus 360, so it's one full rotation afterwards, and so that gives me 595. So for the negative coterminal, 235 minus 360, then we should get negative 125. So for a negative, you should always have a negative within your answer. If there's not, just keep subtracting 360 until you get there. Reference angle. This is where it's a good idea to actually draw the picture. So you know that it's a little bit more than halfway. So it's going to exist right there. Now I can see right there, if I want to try and find out this little angle that's created between the x-axis and the terminating side, that's that ray that comes out, I need to take the angle 235 degrees and minus 180 from it. So that gives me 55. So that's the little angle that I want, the highlighted region in that diagram. And then we're done. Okay, when we start to move on to radians, um, and it's negative, it's actually going to come down like this and not even make it 90 degrees because 90 degrees is going to be half a pi and half of 7 is actually 3.5 so it's a little bit less than that. So to start off with a positive coterminal I write negative 3 pi over 7 but instead of adding 360 in radians that's the same exact thing as saying 2 pi. So a quick way of doing this, since uh, we have these fractions, we're going to take the bottom number, multiply by 2, 14 pi over 7, and so that's going to give us 2 pi when we reduce it, uh, but it makes, this, makes it easier to calculate this. So negative 3 pi plus 14 pi, which ends up giving us 11 pi over 7, and then you're done. So in some ways, I think that this is actually a little bit easier than, um, than the degrees, because there's you know smaller numbers to deal with. So, negative 13 pi minus 14 pi, so that gives us negative 17 pi over 7. And the last one, reference angle. Since we're only going in this direction, it's in this quadrant, our answer here is actually going to be 3 pi over 7. Now, if you really wanted to convert it to degrees, that's okay, but don't make more work for yourself if it's already kind of easily done within the example. Okay, 56. So with 56, what we're going to do, 56 is going to be in the first quadrant, comes up like that. Positive coterminal, uh, 56 uh, plus 360, which ends up giving us 416. The negative coterminal, 56 minus 360, gives us negative 304 degrees. And then the reference angle here, which is kind of nice because it's already written <clears throat> in the way that it is the reference angle. So it's 56 degrees. Now, last one. We need to think about different ways of organizing 5 pi over 6. If you're really good, you should know that that's actually going to be um, 150 degrees. But let's say that you didn't. It's still a little bit more than um, 90 degrees. So positive coterminal. We're going to write 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6. Remember, double the denominator. So 5 pi plus 12 pi gives us 17 pi over 6, the negative version. Which is going to give us negative 7 pi over 6. And lastly, the reference angle here, which is going to give me... Now, this is where we're going to actually have to do some calculations, because you want to try and find out that angle right there, the green one. So to figure that out, what we're going to do is we're going to think about, okay, a full circle is going to be, or half a circle is going to be pi. 
So if I take that, take a pi and subtract it from 5 pi over 6, I'm going to be able to get that angle. So keep the denominator the same, so 6 and 6. So it's actually just going to be pi over 6, or you could also write it as 30 degrees. All right, so let's finish up with the last problem. So evaluate each trigonometric function. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to try and find out sine of 30, sine of 60. Uh, those things should either be memorized or um, you should know how to get to the answer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just explain where my answer comes from. So without further ado, let's get started. Sine of uh, pi over 6, which is the same exact thing as saying sine of 30 degrees, so that's going to be 1 half. Cosine of 5 pi over 6, which refers to going, um, which is actually going to be 225. This is going to be negative, and the reference angle here is going to be 45 degrees, so it's root 2 over 2. Tangent, we're talking about being in the fourth quadrant. The reference angle is 60 degrees, so our answer here is going to be negative square root of 3. D, we're talking about 270 degrees, so we're going to be right here. What is the y value? Another way of thinking about what is sine. So that's going to be negative 1. Cosine of pi, that's the same set thing saying 180 degrees. What's the y value here? Or excuse me, what's the x value here? So that's going to be negative 1. Tangent, um, we have 90 degrees for pi over 2. So what is going to be the slope? That's another way I like to think about tangent. What is the slope if it's connected with the origin? And the slope here is actually going to be undefined. Uh, G, this goes up like that, goes in the opposite direction, and I end up getting a reference angle 45 degrees, so tangent of 45 degrees is actually just going to be 1. Cosine of 4 pi over 3, so it comes in the opposite direction, comes up like this. The angle that we're talking about is 60 degrees, it's also going to be negative, so it's going to be negative 1 half. Sine, which is actually the same as A which comes up like this, sine of 30 degrees, which is going to be 1 half. Sine of pi over 4, which is 45 degrees, which is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 5 pi over 6 is going to be in this quadrant. Yet again, same as that uh, previous example, 150 degrees, reference angle of 30. So cosine, cosine of that, which is going to be root 3 over 2. But since it's in the second quadrant, it's going to be negative. And the last one, tangent of pi over 7, which is going to be in the which is going to be in the third quadrant reference angle of 30 degrees and that's going to be root 3 over 3 but it's going to be positive because that's where tangent is also positive hope you enjoyed the first video for page 1 click the link in the top right hand corner to move on to the next page and thanks for watching